What is up, Packer fans? We are back. Thank you for joining me. Just got done watching the Packers and Saints preseason game. It was exciting. It started raining. It made it very interesting. And it was, you know, a game that I'm super excited that Jordan Love got to play most of. And we got to see a lot of guys do different things. Um, guys that we expected stepped up and guys that are kind of on the line or on the bubble, you know, showed that they, they deserve to be on this team. So it was exciting to watch all of it. You know, I kind of was on Twitter all the whole time tweeting about what was happening. Follow me on Twitter at S underscore Joseph underscore K. And, um, you know, I tweet during the game my reactions and my thoughts about stuff. So check that out. Um, from the start, the Packers got the ball. I wanted to see what kind of return game we'd have today. Special teams did not really show up when it came to kick returns or punt returns. They had Amari Rodgers back for most of it and Rico Gafford for some of it. The Saints kicker Lutz has a big leg. He kicked a 59-yarder in this game, actually, and then most of his kickoffs were out of bounds, out of the back of the end zone, and um, were touchbacks, so... Wasn't a lot of opportunities for kickoffs, but the ones that they did have, they didn't do a lot with. Um, nothing really on punt returns. I think the biggest return was like a nine yarder on a punt by Rodgers. So, or, so yeah, so not a whole lot in the special teams area. Um, the punter did well, but the story of the night was how would Jordan Love do his second preseason action of 2022? Um, the rookie receivers after the week they had with what Rodgers said about them not performing and about not dropping passes and being in the right place and all those different things. The media blew that out of proportion. Rodgers never actually said anybody's name in particular. It was more so just a general statement about all these guys. If you don't catch it, you won't play. And they know that. These receivers know that. They've been playing football for a long time. They've always been told, if you don't catch it, you won't play. I don't think it's anything new for them. And for guys like... You know, Romeo Dobbs, who you can see the talent is there. You want him to keep putting it all together, but you see the mental mistakes, the drops and stuff, and you just, then he shows the flash plays, and you just wish that he could do that all the time. So the first drive, the Packers kind of stalled out. There wasn't a whole lot. The defense came out, stepped up. Um, they allowed a, that field goal, so their Packers were down. And then Jordan Love happened, and... <laughs> um, Second drive was really nice. Actually, the I think the Saints didn't score that second drive, they, that first drive. Neither team scored, and then the, Jordan Love scored a touchdown first. But um, that first drive, or that second drive where Love finally started moving the ball, um, it was third down and three. He um, Love tried to throw it over the shoulder of Dobbs, and he dropped it. Was you know it was a really good throw. Dobbs kind of had to flip around like this, and he dropped it. To me, it wasn't considered a drop drop, but it was a play that Dobbs should have made. Um, I just am excited to see kind of how he progresses. But throughout the game, um, it was, you know, love to Dobbs. Love, love to Winfrey, too, actually, who was had some nice plays. It was it was nice to see him get involved. Um, Josiah DeGuara had a nice catch. But the play of the game was the love to Dobbs touchdown connection um it was about a four yarder from the goal line or in the red zone um love just kind of threw up a fade route to to um Dobbs and he went up over the corner and made a really really nice play I'm calling this love to Romeo connection a the uh, Shakespeare connection just because of the uh the play on the word so I'm excited to see how they progress in the future it should be super fun to watch and that was really the play of the game um that was like the first unit with the the number one offensive line, basically, with the guys that are going to start. You had Yash out there. You had John Runyon Jr. out there, Josh Myers, uh, Jake Hansen at right guard, and then um, Royce Newman at right tackle. Zach Tom did come in early at right tackle, and we know that um, Elkin Jenkins will probably be that starting right tackle, but for now, that was the starting O-line, and they came out and played really well. I know that first scrimmage day against the Saints, they struggled. Um, they had a tough time moving the ball, running the ball. That second day, they played a little bit better. Jordan Love had a nice day. And then today, they were really able to move the ball nicely. A guy who I was really, really, really impressed with, especially early on, he kind of set the tone, 
was Tyler Goodson. This guy can run the ball. He was really doing well and just started pushing the ball down the field. He had a 15-yarder and a 9-yarder, another 9-yarder, <clears throat> a nice catch for about, you know, a couple uh, 10 yards. Catching the ball out of the backfield, running the ball, just doing all those different things. He's doing a really nice job. He's kind of solidified himself with a spot on this roster. I just, I liked how the offensive line played. I liked how he ran behind those guys. Um, it just was a, a really nice look for Tyler Goodson. I think he's going to make this team as an undrafted rookie free agent, five foot nine out of Iowa. He was actually Georgia, um, Mr. Football in Georgia. And we know how good Georgia's college football team. So they have a lot of good high school players in Georgia as well. And for Tyler Goodson to be voted number one um, or player out of high school from Georgia, kind of amazing. The fact that he went to Iowa, um, who knows why he did that, but still pretty cool that the Packers got him. Can't believe he didn't get drafted. They said he was undersized and kind of ran upright. But at five foot nine, he hides behind those guys. He ran a 4-4-2, so he's quick, but I really like what I've seen out of him. I think he's a guy that's going to make this team based on the fact that, you know, Kylan Hill is kind of out right now. And Patrick Taylor was running good tonight, but I still think he just hasn't shown a whole lot. And Dexter Williams is basically just a camp body. I think he's kind of just a guy that's going to be um, on the roster during the preseason. But this offensive line, whether they had... Zach Tom in there. They brought Sean Ryan in for a little bit, the other rookie. Then they had the big Caleb Jones, six foot nine, three hundred seventy pound guy out there who was really playing well. There's a lot of offensive linemen that are pushing for spots. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all works itself out. We kind of have the guys that they like to start, and how many are how many are they gonna keep? It will be interesting to see what happens. Um, I'm just interested to see what they do with each guy, how many they can actually keep on of offensive linemen because it's just, you can't keep like more than nine, really. You really shouldn't. But they have about 10 or 11 guys that are vying for spots. So who will make this squad? We will see how it works out. But so far tonight, everybody played pretty well when it came to the offensive line. Don't really know how many sacks total there were. Not many on Jordan Love. and He got the ball out quick. He was really good tonight. I liked... Just seeing how Love developed, he was a lot more comfortable. His second preseason game, being out there in Lambo, you know, a lot more comfortable setting, of course, for these young uh, quarterbacks. And on the line before, you know, before the snap, he looked like he was comfortable setting the protections. You know, switching the runs from you know the left side to the right side, kind of reading what the defense was doing and getting the offense in the best play. He looked very comfortable doing that. Then once the play started, he looked comfortable going through his reads, his first read, second read, third read. You know, if he needed to step up and run, he would. If he needed to kind of roll out or get get an ex, a little couple extra seconds to make a throw, he would. He looked really comfortable doing all that. You know, just progressing through his reads, making the right read, and, and throwing the ball with confidence and with accuracy. You can tell he's big, strong, and athletic, six foot four, big arm. So he just has to put it all together. I really liked what I saw out of him tonight. Just looks like it's coming all together for him. And he just needs a little more time to progress. He just hasn't really had the reps, like I keep saying. He didn't have these the rookie reps when because of COVID. And then last year, he did get reps but with all the drama surrounding. What was Rodgers going to do? It was probably hard to really focus on everything. But still, I like where he's at at this point. He does get another year here to sit behind Rodgers and wait and probably another one next year. So we will see how that all plays out. I just, I like the development in him. If it takes a little bit longer, that's okay. But he basically had the same kind of stat line as Trey Lance does. And everybody's saying that Trey Lance might be a, you know, dark horse MVP this year. So don't sleep on Jordan Love just yet. I really like what I saw to him. That that's The fade throw to Dobbs for the touchdown was perfect he's really getting good at those those fades really he really is so and he had a nice a lot of nice crossers timing routes with like Winfrey and, and Dobbs like I was saying so he's he's really starting to get the hang of it I really like what I saw um on the defensive side of the ball there wasn't a whole lot of scoring I think the final score was about 20 to 10 
and so there was a lot of good defense the Packers defense was swarming obviously they gave up 10 points but that's not too much that's pretty good for any defense let alone you know guys that are second and third and fourth strings that are trying to make the team that are just got signed yesterday and they're rotating in um pretty awesome to see how this defense played 10 points like I said that's that's great that's <laughs> really tough to do in the NFL um a guy who I saw step up big on the defense, TJ Slayton in the middle was playing really well early on. Isaiah McDuffie, this middle linebacker, was a later round pick last year. He kind of came in and kind of surprised on special teams and made the team. And then this year, he is kind of battling with Ty Summers for that fourth or fifth spot. But now, his play on special teams and in the middle, he's led the, the, the Packers in tackles both games. He had six last week against the the Niners, and then six again this week against the Saints. Isaiah McDuffie is battling Chris Barnes for that third inside linebacker spot. Barnes, we've seen some do some nice things, but McDuffie just flashes. He's all over the field. You know, he's making nice hits, tackling well. On a play where the uh, the Saints running back Jones had, I think it was the screen play where he got downfield. Maybe it was a run where he got downfield, but either way, McDuffie was running down to catch him. And there was a big offensive lineman between him and the running back. And literally, McDuffie pushed him into the running back. And the running back took himself or got taken out by the offensive lineman. And they went down and, you know, he ended the play. So, not an ideal tackle, but it worked out just as well. Pretty awesome for um, McDuffie to really start stepping up. And you can tell that he's a gamer and he just flies around the football. Uh, I like what I've seen out of him. I think he's a guy that's going to really take over that you know third fourth linebacker spot middle linebacker spot we have our starters quay walker he's flying around he had some snaps tonight he looked really good and then obviously devondre campbell is great so um barnes and mcduffie will be battling for that third spot and i think that mcduffie's kind of getting the leg up here so we will see um an interesting note so i was talking about the kick returns and special teams rico gafford is the fastest guy on the packers he was on Wyoming's team when Josh Allen was getting scouted and looked at in during the 2018 draft they came out all the NFL scouts that came out to watch Josh Allen and this guy Rico Gafford ran a 422 at the the pro day or like the you know the the pro day for the scouts and for Wyoming and that just blew the doors off of everybody you know everybody was so shocked so he is the fastest guy in the Packers we know that Eric Stokes ran like a 429 I think so they're just about the same, but still having Rico be that quick. Hopefully we can get him going when it comes to kick returning. Um, that's pretty much his only chance of making this roster, especially with how Keandre Thomas has really come out as a cover corner. I like what I saw to him. Um, so after the Packers scored that nice touchdown, it, that, that catch by Dobbs was great. You know, he ended up on his back. He kind of did a... Um, uh, a, a snow angel, and then he ran up into the into the Lambo and into the stands and did a Lambo leap. Sorry, and so <laughs> super exciting and just awesome for Dobbs to make a play like that after the week that they all went through. Um, Samari Torre we talked about how the uh, the meeting with Rogers was really um, beneficial for all the guys, and they just want to step up and prove that they belong. So really, really nice to see that. Um, there was. <laughs> Really is some nice plays throughout the game. Um, Love was making something out of nothing on a third and 19 pass play. He was trying to get a guy open and moving around and scrambling, and, and no one got open, but he just, the way that he felt comfortable in the pocket, moving around, um, dancing and everything was really, really awesome. Um, later on, they actually had another third and 19 play where they he was roughed on the pass. They were down in their own goal line, and they were able to get out of that bad situation. Um, there was a false start or like a hold on Tyler Davis, which backed him up and just can't have that. Tyler Davis struggled. He had false start and doing just other other things. And then later on, um, I wasn't going to say it yet, but since I'm talking about Tyler Davis later on, Packers are driving again. Jordan Love has a nice throw to Davis. Davis kind of bobbled it for a second, caught it, turned, got hit, got hit again, and it felt popped out and fumbled. And it was literally right before the half the Saints had the ball so check this out the Saints had the ball uh it was like second and 12 
something like they ran the ball or something, and then Lafleur called timeout. He's trying to get the ball back for Jordan Love. The Saints run a pass play. He the uh, Ian Book throws it, and Micah Abernathy. I literally had just tweeted about how Vernon Scott had gone down. He was injured. He hurt his shoulder on that play that I was talking about. Then McDuffie pushed the guy, and he was trying to tackle with his arm stretched out, and it got ripped back. So it could be a like a bicep tear. It could be anything. I hope it's not bad. Um, it could be a pec thing, but either way, Vernon Scott went down, which kind of opened the door for a guy like Sean Davis and Micah Abernathy, who right before the half, um, like I said, Ian Book was trying to throw it, and Abernathy made a crazy, just super acrobatic, athletic play where he jumped and kind of got tripped and leaped over the guy, but caught the ball and had his knee down. It was really a really amazing catch um, for a guy that just got picked up this week. A USFL guy, so he's in shape. You know, he just played a whole season in the USFL, so he's ready to go. He had nothing to lose tonight, and he played super well. Um, another guy, so there was a weird play where Ian Book tried to get the snap, the Saints quarterback. He played the whole game, I'm pretty sure. Andy Dolan didn't play, and Jameis Winston did not play, so Ian Book was the only quarterback they had playing tonight. And he had a, a snap center a quarterback exchange issue where the ball like kind of squirted around. Uh, right, right around the goal or the uh, the scrimmage line, and then it shot out towards the the linebackers, the Packers defense, and then it shot out even farther back to the Packers safeties, and big long dreaded um Sean Davis, the safety, he was kind of the fourth safety coming in. Now he's totally bumped up to the third safety with Vernon Scott going down. He scooped it up and ran it about forty yards to the other side of the field, and then that the next play is that's when Tyler Davis fumbled it. Um, when Jordan Day or Jordan Love was tr- finally trying to get the ball down the field and maybe score before half, so that was a, a lot of back and forth right before the half. Um, it looked good, it looked bad, then it looked good, and just a lot of craziness. So having um Micah Abernathy and then Sean Davis and then um Tyler Davis kind of ruined all of it. Just a lot of. Um, interesting. A lot, a lot of fun stuff going on. Packers defense looked good. They forced a lot of turnovers. The Packers' only turnover of the game was that Tyler Davis fumble. Such a bummer because Tyler Davis came into camp with so much hype. You know, they really were talking him up that he's this tall, athletic, you know, fast, can stretch the field type guy. And I wasn't super high on him. I hadn't seen him do much. I hadn't really heard him, you know, talked about much. He kind of just came up out of nowhere, and so I said, prove it, and camp started, and heard nothing really, and then training camp started, and the pads came on, and still just nothing, and now it's a lot of false starts, that's all all I hear to see is false starts, and then now he gets a chance to make a catch, and he fumbles right away, I think he basically played himself off this roster, I just did a 53-man roster prediction yesterday, and I had him as tight end number four, I think he's cut. If they do keep a fourth tight end, it's going to be Elise Mack, and he kind of struggled tonight too. So Packers may only go with three tight ends and see what they can do after that. Sal Canella had a nice catch for a first down. He had a 13-yard catch. I think it was Danny Etling throwing him the ball, but it was a really nice grab and run after the catch. He's a guy that maybe can sneak into that fourth spot if Tyler Davis keeps having blunders like he did tonight. Um, I don't see Sal Canella making the squad, but maybe he can sneak on there if the Packers do want to keep four tight ends. We will see. I know Elise Mack was on some of the special teams plays, um, the like kickoff cover, or kickoff return, and and some of those things. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, yeah, I just <laughs> Tyler Davis definitely played himself off of this roster. Such a bummer. Um, because there was high expectations for him. There, there re- really was. So, But on a side note, special other special teams, we have um, we had Gabe Burchick last week who shanked a 30-yarder so far left that it went farther left than it did forward. And so they cut him. Mason Crosby is still out, out on the pup list, and they brought in a USFL kicker, Ramiz Ahmed, who drilled a 61-yarder, the longest field goal in USFL history, the one-year history of the USFL. But still a 61-yarder is still a 61-yarder. Mason Crosby's longest is only 58 yards. But Ramiz Ahmed, 
um, came in the camp. He's been kicking really well. He drilled it one from 45 yards tonight. It would have probably been good from 55 yards, but it was right down the middle with a lot of power. This guy's got a big leg, and accuracy is the only issue. And it, So far, I haven't seen any accuracy issues. He's really kicked well. I don't know if it's really going to put pressure on Crosby. Obviously, the Packers need a guy in there to just to kick for preseason games, but if he keeps kicking well, maybe the Packers do give him a look. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, I'm just <laughs> super excited. Sorry, I kind of really scrambled all of these plays together. There was a lot that was happening, and I'm just trying to talk about all the exciting moments. It's just, you know, having all these position battles give you something to watch on both sides of the ball, give you something that you're focused on or trying to watch, uh, look for and see what guys can step up. When Vernon Scott went down, that was huge because it added Enos Gaines or added him to Enos Gaines, Darnell Savage, Dallin Levitt, Tariq Carpenter, and then, like I said, Vernon Scott all out as safeties. The Packers don't have many other safeties other than that. That's why they brought in Devontae Cross, the guy out of Virginia, different Devontae. And then they, they got the Micah Abernathy guy. Obviously, they have Sean Davis, and that's basically it in the back end, so... Very thin back there. They needed to see what they have. And having guys, you know, like Abernathy get a pick and then Sean Davis scoop an, a fumble, That's that's those are huge plays for young guys that are trying to make their name on this defense. Um, I think the Vernon Scott injury might be serious. I know that Nick Perry tore his bicep back in the day, and he was out for, I think, the whole season. If that is a bicep tear or a pec tear, he could be out for a while, at like eight weeks at least. So we will see how that goes. Um, I just, it's tough because, you know, he was playing so well. He it was in with the, the ones with Darnell out, and now he's probably done for at least now. Um, that's why I was just tweeting about Micah Abernathy, how we needed a guy like him to step up. And as I hit send, he picked that one off. Pretty amazing. Um, you know, I kind of just was, I just kind of studied him up a little bit this week after the Packers signed him. Thought, well, this guy's a ball hawk. He's a guy that can make some plays. And uh, I kind of like his name. So I just was like, well, I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> so uh, funny how that works out, but really an awesome play by him. Um, so yeah, the Packers defense was all over the place. I'm watching the outside linebackers. I'm trying to see what, backup defense alignment can make a push uh chris slayton towards the end of the game was all over the place really disruptive obviously he's going against some of those second third string offense alignment towards the end maybe even a fourth string guy and so making plays at, at the end of the fourth quarter isn't as impressive as making plays in the first half or first quarter but it's still making plays nonetheless you're still dominating the competition that you have in front of you and that's all you want to see out of these guys he looked really good um, JJ and Agbar, um, the rookie, he looked good as well. He had a, a sack, but he kind of got his hand in the horse collar of Ian Book and ripped him down like that. After a few plays of being pretty disruptive and being so close, he finally got there, but he ripped him down by the neck and got flagged. Um, tough call because I think they called intentional grounding, but it wasn't because I th they, he was outside the pocket or whatever. But then he ripped him down by the neck on top of that. However, that last drive... The Packers' defense held. It was first down and goal from, like, the, inside the 10, and then they got backed up from a hold or a, fl uh, a flag. No, it was offensive pass interference. The guy caught in the end zone. He pushed Keandre Thomas. So there was three pass. I think it was maybe all four passes in a row, but at least the first three, first, second, and third down, they kept targeting Keandre Thomas. He's kind of like that sixth, seventh corner on this Packers team, but he held his own. They did not score, and the Packers got the ball back, and they ended up just kneeling it. But pretty awesome way to hold the, the for the defense to hold at the end. Um, like I said, they only gave up ten points the whole game, and it, it would have made it a little more interesting if the Saints would have scored there. But still, Packers defense looks elite on all levels. The first string is even better than these guys, and these guys held them to ten points. So I know it's just the backup offense for the Saints but still it's the backup players for the Packers too so um pretty exciting that our defense is getting this good there's just there's speed and there's you know youth and there's you know experience and it's all just mixing together in a great, a great perfection and it's super exciting to watch 
Um, yeah, I'm, I kept saying that I'm excited about this love to um, Romeo connection. It's going to be something to watch in the future. They interviewed Rodgers, and he was talking, you know, Love looks like he can progress and be a great quarterback in this league. But So I think Rodgers is planning on staying for a while. He looks like he's got a whole new mindset, a whole new um, attitude when it comes to playing football, especially for the Packers. And I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon as long as he can play. So we will see how that all works out with Jordan Love um, playing in the future. But these position battles throughout the Packers, um, team we're going on all night the offensive line you know Caleb Jones came in there the big guy he came in and started really playing well um, Dexter Williams got in there running the ball he was running well and it just it was nice to see how different players were were contributing Kobe Jones on on defense did well like I said Chris Lane kept stepping up he's just really disruptive he's a guy that's going to be hard for the Packers to keep off this team that's why if a guy like Tyler Davis gets taken off you can add extra guys at extra positions. There's just so many different spots where we might want to keep extra guys. I heard earlier that the Packers may keep eight receivers, which would blow my mind because that's so many. But all eight of these guys, if they put them on the if they put them on the practice squad, they will get taken. Samari Torre, the rookie. Um, Christian Watson, obviously the rookie. Romeo Dobbs, the rookie. Can't put those guys out there. They'll get taken. Juwan Winfrey will probably d- get taken at this point. Um, Rodgers already shouted him out. I think he makes a team. So <laughs> that's four right there. Then you have Amari Rodgers from last year. He's probably going to make the team for sure. And then you have Lazard, Sammy Watkins, and Cobb. That's eight guys. How do you keep all eight? But how do you let any of them walk? That's why a guy like Tyler Davis with his drops and stuff, I think the Packers just kind of let him go. Maybe play Lazard inside. He's a pretty good uh, blocker as well. And he's a big guy, 6'5". Not as heavy as Tyler Davis, but still taller than Davis. So he's a guy that can block if they want to use him as kind of that inline guy instead of Davis where, you know, Davis wouldn't really block up to be a block or line up to be a blocker. He'd be more of a pass catching tight end. So we'll see how that works out. I just, you know, I was so, we were, everybody was so high on Tyler Davis. I wanted him to prove it. And so far he's just done nothing. And I think he really played himself off of this team. He was, he was basically a lock coming into training camp based on the fact that there was so much hype. All he had to do was just produce a little bit, just show him a little bit to, so that they kind of could justify what they were thinking about how he could play. And he just, he couldn't do it. So <laughs> a bummer though, because, you know, we're in number 84. I was just hoping he would be the next one. So um, it is what it is. And, you know, throughout the night, I was watching different the other receivers. Amari Rogers had a nice end around, but he had, you know, some, some nice plays. He had some catches where he should have caught them, but there was good coverage. And, and then Samari Torre, he's been having a great camp, super good camp. And he actually um, had a one just one ball thrown to him where he had a nice route, but the ball was kind of on the wrong side. It was just a little timing issue. But uh, he should have given himself self some more room on, towards the sideline, but and Love could have hit him with a better ball. But nonetheless, pretty good play. And then, um, yeah, Marty Rogers had an 18-yarder, really nice throw from Love. So that was pretty much the highlights for those guys. I think Ro- Marty Rogers showed enough to to just kind of be a, a piece on offense. I just I wanted to see him do more on special teams. Just wasn't enough tonight. It is what it is. Hopefully against the Chiefs next week, we will see more from these guys. But, um, yeah, that'll be interesting for Love to go back to Kansas City, a place where he played last year in a real game when Rodgers was out with the COVID stuff. So now he's coming back to Kansas City. Maybe he'll be a little more comfortable there the second time. Kind of knows what to expect. And, you know, it's preseason game three. So this will be interesting. Rodgers did leave the door open for for maybe the starters playing a little bit of that game. We will see. Maybe we'll get a little Mahomes-Rodgers early on in the Chiefs-Packers game. Uh, There wasn't a confirmed, no, we are not playing. So something to watch and hear or listen for during this week. Um, If they did play, that would totally be the highlight of next week um, and of probably the whole preseason. Um, Yeah, so... 
Special teams, nothing doing tonight. I, I wrote that just now, just nothing doing tonight. Um, kick return, nothing. Punt, or punt return, nothing. They gave up a de- a pretty big kick return, I think like a 50-yarder, and nothing really on punt returns, but the kickoffs were good, and punting was really good. Pat O'Donnell punted exceptionally. He's he's a vet. I think he was with the Bears for like eight or nine years. Kicked at Soldier Field, kicked throughout the winter, kicked in bad weather, kicked in that wind. He knows how to play. Um, I don't think kicking that Lambo is going to be an issue for him, so I'm not concerned with how he um, performs. He's a guy that's just going to be consistent and do his job week in and week out, so that's super clutch to have that. Last year, Corey Bajorquez struggled once it started getting cold. I think the guy. I think he was um, from... like. South America or something, so he was used to it being warmer and just the cold. Just being in Lambo isn't for everybody. It just isn't for everybody, and we all know that. That's part of the home field advantage of the frozen tundra. But for a guy like Romeo Dobbs, he loves playing here. It seems like he just had a great game. I just love the fact that he got that touchdown on an amazing catch, and he really played well. He had some nice catches throughout the night. Uh, nice separation. He had one, that one early on where he was just he had his head turned the wrong way and he should have caught it. But nonetheless, he played really well. Um, him scoring a touchdown and getting that Lambo leap was priceless after the week of just crazy media stuff. So again, just super pumped for him. I just um, I think Rodgers wants Lazard, Watkins, and Cobb to be the starters. But I really think Dobbs' playmaking ability is gonna it's gonna be hard to keep him off the field. Especially with Cobb, Cobb, I think, slowing down a little bit. They're not going to really want to run him every single play. They're going to bring in a guy like Dobbs to kind of open things up. And I really think he can get separation, make catches, be a guy that Rodgers can count on. We just have to see some more consistency, and um, I think it's coming. I think he's just going to start figuring it out slowly. So um, that's exciting. Yeah, so, yeah, um, more special teams. I was talking about Pat O'Donnell, but... Jack Coco, the long snapper. We know we let go of Steve Wordle a couple of weeks ago, and so Jack Coco is the long snapper. No issues tonight on kickoff or I mean, um, field goals or punts. We don't want to forget what happened on January 22nd, 2022 against the San Francisco 49ers at Lambeau in the divisional round of the playoff game last year. Never forget, but we had a punt block, so every time we punt it, every time we do anything special teams-wise, I watch closely i just want to make sure that things go smoothly and so far tonight and last week things were pretty good no major blunders no major issues and i think rich basaccia is doing wonders for these guys i'm excited to see how it kind of progresses and hopefully we can get some return action going finally um yeah tonight they threw up the stat where it said Rodgers had 85 touchdowns and nine interceptions the last two seasons. So if anybody questions why he was back-to-back MVP, that's your answer. That's insane. Um, Brady had more than nine touchdowns just last year, and and Rodgers hasn't had more than nine in the last two years. Pretty remarkable. So, yeah, so then, you know, it's the fourth quarter. Packers, I think they were up 13-10. Danny Elling came in the game with um, about nine minutes left in the fourth. Uh, Jordan Love played late into the game, obviously, like I said, just until the nine minutes left in the fourth. I thought after last week, Jordan Love only played till half. I was asking Matt LaFleur to play Love longer. I didn't need to see Danny Elling. I wanted to see all of Love. I wanted to see him play pretty much the whole game, see what he could do with the full game of action. And so he got most of it, like I said, all the way to the nine-minute mark. Daniel Edwin came in. He was playing okay. You know, he's a guy that six foot six played for LSU. He's you know big physical. He's an, he's just an athlete. I don't know how much of a quarterback he is yet, but he's an athlete. And he got out on a rollout play and that sixty one or fifty one yarder for a touchdown. He runs a four or a four seven six, so that's pretty fast for a quarterback, especially a big guy. And he got into the end zone really fast. Did his Lambo leap, and it was while they were interviewing Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers Adamas was basically talking about Danny Edling and how he wanted, he was going to score a touchdown and he had a, got a haircut and his family was there and all this stuff. And then literally as they're talking to Rodgers, Danny Edling's running, streaking down the sideline for a touchdown. Pretty funny that that occurred and, you know, so much 
Rodgers has just got the vibe, I guess, right? <laughs> that ayahuasca is making him predict the future. Hopefully, it can he can predict himself into a Super Bowl and an MVP or whatever. Just a Super Bowl. You can keep the MVPs. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, th so throughout the night, I started hearing names that I w noted just do it during the 53 man roster and then just guys that I was watching for to kind of stand out. Devontae Cross with a nice tackle. He just came out. J like I said, JJ and Agbar was playing well. Chris Swain keeps popping up. Uh, Nagbar, again, um, it just was so nice to see these guys come along. Kendra Thomas, I think, all but solidified his spot. I don't think KB on Ento is going to make this team, like I was saying. And Casey on Nixon, I did not hear a lot about him tonight. I didn't hear his name as much as I did last week. So there's still a lot of moving parts, a lot of people, or a lot of players to watch and to see how they play. But um, that, that red zone defense at the end of the game, really nice to watch how that defense played and kind of just you know, swarmed to the quarterback and didn't let him get comfortable and just kept being relentless. They could have given up the touchdown at the end there. They had a 10-point lead and wouldn't have really affected the outcome of the game, but out of pride and just for the fact that they wanted to hold for their for their guys, just showed what kind of players these Packer, this Packers team has. Um, really, really awesome. I don't know the final stats. I know Jordan Love finished, like I said, 12 of 24, 113 yards and a touchdown. And the Packers had 181 yards of total rush offense tonight, rushing yards. So, well, the last, like, two plays were kneel downs by Etling, so I think it might be, like, 177 or whatever it is, but it's it was 181 before the kneel downs, which, for the Packers, who's who's been notoriously a run or a passing football team, for them to have this many running yard, rushing yards is really remarkable, especially in a preseason game, especially with kind of a makeshift offensive line, especially with all these young guys, especially, you know, rotating in all these players. So really impressive. Uh, the offensive line really, really stepped up. They were big. The defense played super well. Special teams did their job. Uh, Jordan Love took another step, I think. I wish his numbers were a little bit better. 50% is not really where you want to be. You want to be at about 60, 65%. Aaron Rodgers was a, is like about a 68% career. So to be at 50 is kind of low. Um, I think he was being over overly cautious tonight, just not wanting to make that uh, to have the interception or make that bad play or the turnover. And so some of his throws were like low and away, just kind of making sure it was not intercepted. But if no one can catch it, that doesn't help either. So um, a little more accuracy, maybe a little more decisiveness and just a little more confidence in his throws. But such a big leap from last year to, the, to this year really was impressive. And I'm super excited with, with what the kid might be able to do in the future. Uh, just keep learning, keep developing, watching what Aaron Rodgers does. And I think he's got the athletic um, background and just overall talent to someday be really good in this league. Um, yeah, it was pretty exciting just, just to watch, just to watch the Packers play. It's been a long time. Uh, last week was great too against the 49ers, but, um, play of the game, obviously Romeo Dobbs touchdown in the first quarter, that second drive or drive. Um, yeah, uh, Jordan Love threw a great pass and, and Dobbs caught, went up and caught it. So, Awesome play. Probably the the uh, the worst play of the game is Tyler Davis's fumble. It's the only turnover of the entire game for the Packers. Uh, they forced a bunch on the defensive side of the ball, but the fumble by Tyler Davis kind of stopped any momentum before the half of scoring and really kind of um, just stalled the offense out. It was tough, so I think kind of pushed him off this roster. I just did a 53-man yesterday, and kind of was hoping that he'd show up today and kind of prove prove why he should be on the roster, but he did the exact opposite. He's the guy that I'm probably taking off this roster now. So um, check out the next video I make on the 53-man prediction. It'll be in about a week or so, but I will make other videos, obviously, before then. We have plenty of days of training camp and a lot more Packer news coming your way. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and to the channel. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Check out the next videos. Peace out. Go Packers. And see you later. Peace.